Hi everybody, I am Christy and today I want to talk about something that I am hoping, 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 hoping will be a huge tool in your current relationship with a narcissist or to <laughs> even better would be to prevent somebody from being succumbed to getting sucked into the vortex of uh, a narcissistic abusive relationship. And this is something that just like dawned on me the other day when I was having to derail my ex-husband um, trying to use his manipulation tactics. What I want to do is go over the common I communication guess. manipulation tactics that narcissists use very frequently and very extensively. And they are, they are so great at this and they are such masters at manipulation that you like you're so effing confused you you don't pick up on them going and back and you know evaluating in hindsight it's it's very easy to to see once you're able to I guess almost like dissect what it is you're looking for by giving you examples of actual like real life conversations via texting from my own personal experience and within these examples uh, I will show you what the manipulation tactic used was how you can pick up on these and kind of see if maybe it gives you a little bit of the proof that you need again this is not a diagnosis I cannot you know confirm or deny that you are dealing with a narcissist but regardless um, if this is something that you find that you are dealing with with your partner narcissist or not it is still manipulation tactic and um, it is still trying to gain some kind of control or get you to behave in a particular manner that they're they're trying to persuade you to do I mean that is what manipulation is and these are not going to go over every single manipulation tactic that the narcissist uses but because there are many um, but it will go over the ones that you hopefully will be able to see in in old text messages that you have or if you want to you know test so to speak your the the person that you're currently dealing with and help open your eyes and and realize that you know this person is actually trying to manipulate you and um, like I said narcissists are not nobody deserves to be manipulated in the fashion where they're trying to gain control and persuade you to do something to their benefit and usually it's also done to kind of harm or destroy you if you are dealing with a narcissist so here we go let's dissect some text messages Though the term word salad was actually coined to describe the kind of nonsensical words that you would hear in a conversation with a person who has schizophrenia, it is often, often used to describe conversations that one would have with a narcissist. And in regards to word salad with a narcissist, it is the circular conversation tactics that they use to ensure that the talks don't really end well or positively for the other individual conversation. It is a concoction and a conglomeration of techniques that include, but are not limited to, gaslighting, projection, denial, lying, subject changing, blame shifting, insulting, stonewalling, playing victim, sympathy ploys, threats, demands, and provoking others to become defensive. So these are the ones that will be pointed out, probably not all of them, in the examples to follow. And hopefully throughout these examples, you'll be able to look at your own text messages and pinpoint the techniques that the narcissist or other person is using to try to manipulate you. So out further ado, let's dissect some text. <laughs> So for example number one, this was a conversation between my ex-husband and I in regard to the schedule for the children. This was during our separation period, but prior to finalization or any kind of like court order as far as custody went, it was like pulling teeth to try to get some kind of concrete schedule with him. To make matters worse, we were actually doing what they call nesting where instead of the children leaving the house we left on the days that we were not scheduled to have the child 
this conversation one about due to wanting a switch in in the schedule. The first example of the manipulation technique would be denial and and lying. So there was a schedule that he designed himself. I had agreed to and then he claimed what his nights were and when I you know, responded about the proposed schedule this is the situation that occurred. So for the denial part he claims that you no know, he proposed every other weekend. I had screenshot the schedule that he had himself written up. So within the very next line he obviously blame shift turning the problem back on me. I am the dishonest one. After my response, he could not answer to the fact that he, in fact, had written this. So he's changing the subject. I became that broken record. I was well on to him at this point. I told him not to change the subject. Asked him again if he wrote this. Brings up something else. Hadn't been written down. Still with the broken record. Once again, he changes the subject. Now he's saying every week we go through this. Which, that truly wasn't a lie because it was, like I said, pulling teeth with this man. My response again stayed with that broken record. And he flips the subject and starts to voicing his mans and control, saying that when he will have them and these are going to be my days and basically that's it. I respond, did you in fact write this to stop trying to, to switch up the stuff? Then he goes into the gaslighting saying he's not sure, he's not sure if he wrote it, he doesn't know, which is basically the technique to try to make you feel crazy, like you're not even sure what you had heard. I stay with it to the broken record. He again comes back with another control and another gaslighting. Okay, well, great. I'm going to avoid this and we're just going to do what I said. Lastly, he proceeds to go with the gaslighting and the control method again, saying that he's not going to argue with them. That was basically the conversation. Every single time he wrote, he was using one of his manipulation tactics and circular conversation technique. All right, so for example, number two, this is a conversation between my ex-husband and I in regard to our daughter had been away on a trip with her girlfriend and she was approaching the house shortly and needed a ride home and it was his night to have the children and she had been trying on multiple attempts to get in contact with him and then once she was finally able to reach him, he refused to come get her. So she reached out to me saying, isn't going to get me, what do I do? I need a ride home. So I contacted him telling him that she was on her way back and uh, that she was trying to get a hold of him and was he going to go get her or not. So his first response back consist of denial, lying, and gaslighting, saying that he wasn't sure why she didn't tell him that she, she was coming home and that he was tired of me getting involved in his business and that I needed to leave him alone. So I responded back saying that she had contacted me after multiple attempts of reaching out to him and that he then refused and that, you know, how was I not supposed to intervene when it was in relation to our child and transportation and care needs for our child. So then he very next very next statement uses gaslighting and blame shifting, stating that that she, once again, never told him that she was on her way home, that she needed a ride, and that I was to, to, to butt out, and that this was between he and my daughter, and that I needed to leave him alone again. My response back again was, how was I supposed to stand ground, not do anything about it, reminded him that he told her he wasn't coming to get. So then his very next response, claiming that he didn't talk to her all day, and that now she needs something and he's supposed to just jump and he's not going to do it. And then he proceeds to use gaslighting with like dumping the problem on me. So if you want to go get her, you do it. He doesn't care. So I respond back saying that this conversation I was having with him via text message, my daughter is still continuing to call me saying that he's not answering. He is, she doesn't know what to do. She's going to be back at her girlfriend's house very shortly. It proceeding to get later on into the evening and that she was going to need a ride home. So I reminded him of that. This. He again avoids the problem by dumping it on me, telling me that he will either go to his convenience and get her or I do it. So tell him he, he doesn't want me to intervene. So I said, don't tell me. Daughter once again blames it on her saying, well, she should have said something to me because now he's talked to her earlier, which before he said he hadn't even talked to her all day. Then throwing this, she didn't mention that she was on her way home. So I respond back saying that, well, he should have maybe had communicated better with his daughter and been a little more proactive in, in, in his awareness on her return home from Florida 
if he had at all even spoke to her throughout the week that she had been gone. So he then again does the technique of denial and blame shifting, saying that in trying to not lose my cool over the situation, I, I, I just like reiterate him that, look, let's just do the right thing. This family has been driving for two days now and that it is his duty, his night, he needs to, to, to go pick up his, his daughter. Then he's telling me now at this point that he's already spoke to her and that she is just going to stay there for the night. When in fact, throughout the conversation, she had been contacting me, realizing at this point, after this has been going on for about 45 minutes, that had no intentions of leaving the party or getting her. So I just decided I would go. I would go at this point and pick up my daughter for for her sake and for the other family's sake. So I proceeded to tell him that I was actually on my way to get her and he, the, with the project and saying, okay, well that that's just between my daughter and I. Did respond back. I was a little, little upset at this point saying he did not need to take out being selfish on, on the children and caring for the children. So he then tries to gaslight and blame shift saying that all I do is try and make him look bad and, you know, try to turn everybody against him and control everything. So I stuck with my boundary and again, trying to let him not let him manipulate me saying that this in fact was his problem. And this something that he created. He then proceeds with gaslighting and blame shifting, saying that it was it was her fault. He stuck with this story that, that she was going to stay there. So at that point, I had already arrived and picked up my daughter, to let him know that I was at, at her girlfriend's house. And then he he claims that that he was there. I guess he was claiming to be at the house. I'm sorry, not at not at uh, his girlfriend's house, but at the house had already arrived at her friends and that we weren't at the house and that, you know, he could confirm this, this state with my daughter. His last is what I'm going to call the like, I won technique, totally switching tunes, acting like we just had this pleasant conversation stating, oh, great, have a great night. Oh, and by the way, tell my daughter I love her. All right, so one more example, because I am sure you are catching on rather quickly now that just about everything they say, especially when being questioned or being firm with the boundary, is um, some form of a manipulation tactic to try to avoid taking any kind of accountability, responsibility, or blame for anything that you may be questioning or um, holding them accountable for. So this last example was something that had transpired because during the nesting period, he had decided to install a video surveillance slash like garage door control that he could control via an app on his um, smartphone. And I am, I make furniture for a living for my parents' small business. So when I'm not doing stuff with the kids, my primary location was in, in the garage and, or, you know, the driveway right outside of the garage. So when I had returned back to the house for, for my stay, I decided after several times that he would just rule out the day when I would be working, just shut the garage door on me, just fun of his own. I decided that I was going to unplug it during the nights that I was at the house. So he reaches out to me asking me to please plug this device back in. I asked why it was necessary while I was there. And he said that it was going to, to mess it up being unplugged. So I responded back and saying that I didn't feel that it was necessary for him to be watching me, nor did I feel comfortable about the situation. So then he claims that he only put it in there so that he could let the kids in when, when they needed to be let in and that I needed to just plug it in and not be paranoid. So my response back was that it had nothing to do with being paranoid, but that I know he is, he is sneaky. Again, I was onto him at this point and that there was no reason to control the matter and if his concern was you know, because the the garage door like keypad this was his excuse saying that if it was you know, it were to go up that this would be his way of letting them in and i had just said well why don't you just get him a key and to avoid 
that problem. He then starts starts with threatening he didn't like this response, I guess because of my, my smart aleck tenant about the key comment, and says that he doesn't touch my stuff and that I should leave his stuff alone. And if I don't want to, then he can clean up real well in referencing to destroying my stuff, which he has done multiple times in the past. So at that point, I just reiterated that didn't really appreciate him controlling the garage door at his discretion, especially since he had shut it on me several of times that there was no reason for him to automatically jump to threats because I had not nor would I ever destroy his stuff and that nice of him to to kind of jump to that conclusion. So um, these are the examples. I could probably give you thousands more throughout every single conversation pretty much over the past several years with my ex-husband and I'm sure if you start scrolling through your text messages that you've had with your significant other if you feel that they are too being manipulative you will be able to pinpoint exactly what they're doing and it's 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 as you can see with this it's it's frequent it's pretty much every response from them is some sort of a technique and the the thing you want to kind of remember is to stand firm, try to be cognizant of the fact that they are manipulating you and use this like broken record technique. Just don't let them derail you. Even if it's just you have to say the same statement over and over and over and over again, like I did in the first exam, asking him if he in fact had put this proposal together and or wrote it just you know that is something that you you will know if it's if, if they don't answer the question and they refuse to take any kind of ownership responsibility or accountability or just uh, omit stuff or lie or deny that should be a huge huge red flag so again narcissist or not this is something that doing to control the situation, to control you and or to persuade you to do something that, that, that they want. And it isn't right. It is a form of abuse. Hopefully this will help you become more aware of it and not fall into the narcissistic bullshit. All right, guys, uh, just keep remembering who you are, that you deserve so much more and none of this is your fault. All right, guys, peace.